and we are back at it with PT Cruiser. This is prep for run number four. Is it unspeakable to say there could be a fifth? I don't know. We, uh, we intend on this to be the last one. So not a ton to do. Uh, the motor is, I kind of showed my post run, the motor's not touched. Uh, everything's completely fine. My gutted out uh, thermostat, completely fine, worked great. Radiator, it did get bent in, leaked out water. Uh, I'm going to plan on doing something a little different with that here. I'm going to mention in a second. The spray foam didn't get touched. The con damaged transmission control module there was in great position. Ran great. Unfortunately, this is what did us in as, well, I also had no tires that had any air in them at the Derby. I mean, I probably could have snagged one off someone, but I wasn't expecting on running heats in a stock class. I haven't seen that in years. Well, lesson learned, but with my own bumper that I had rigged on there, came off and got trapped under the car, probably a lesson there, and snapped right where the inner goes into the outer tie rod, snapped it. So what I'm going to do, and that's why even though the motor was purring, body was, took a lot of hits over here, my cage did pretty much completely come apart. I just re-welded it. Uh, better weld job this time. So we'll see, we'll see if uh, if it comes apart, if I'm getting slammed again, but cage is back together. Just a four point cage this time, not worried about the halo bar, don't need it, and it's just extra time and I'm not worried about that. Uh, the rear tires, I'm just gonna leave flat. This guy is good, the other side I'll show you here in a sec. It's a little bent in, uh, but should be all right. But this is what did us in, so what I'm going to do, and I'm pretty sure this will work, uh, you know, if I take any hits over here, I mean, who knows how long it'll last, but I mean, at this point, my passenger side pretty much from front to back is soft. Like even in here where my tank and battery is, it is almost to the point, and that covered up as I was welding, almost to the point where you can see that's where my old mount was. I'm gonna have to change that for my ratchet strap. That guy in there is good. Probably gonna have to take it this way, use this and just put my U-bolt here. Uh, so that I can keep it stationary. You can see I was getting slammed and it got pressed all the way in, which is actually not bad. It's actually stiffer there than it was, but uh, we'll see how that holds. But with this guy, I'm going to weld first this back together. And you can see how it was slightly bent. Now it's obviously not gonna be, get it to where it kind of sits together when it's straight. It's obviously not gonna be a great weld there. I'm gonna weld that and just so it holds. Then I got this metal piece, I'm gonna slide right up to it. You can see it's almost flush to this, the outer tie rod. Inner tie rod, I'm gonna to try to get some weld around here, but right here I'm gonna to try to make a real good weld. As you can see, it's pretty much flush there. But I gotta get it welded back here. I think what I'm gonna do is take, I have a couple sheets of metal from my wife's parents' house. After I have this welded, I'm gonna cut a small piece so I can weld it here and then weld it to here so that this is more solid, not just to the outer tie rod, but also has a decent grip on the inner tie rod because I want it to be grabbing at both ends. And then this big pipe, which I'm gonna cut about four inches, I'm gonna slide over before I weld because once it's together, it's obviously there. And it'll be about halfway over that, about halfway over this. And I'm gonna try to get a good weld here and a good weld there. So I kind of have this double kind of welded and I should have a pretty good grip on the outer tie rod. I'll weld it to this. And again, like a small piece of metal on each side, I'm gonna weld to that. So that is the plan. I looked into buying tie rods. The outer tie rod, if it had snapped at the outer tie rod, it's like 20 odd bucks, not a big deal, but it literally snapped where it threads in. So I would have had to replace both the inner and outer. That's like 50 something bucks at least, not to mention you gotta have the special tool. And I'm like, nah, I don't even know how long this thing's gonna last. I'm gonna run it one more time because the motor's still not touched. Not worried about that. So that is our plan. Beat out around the fenders. Sorry, I got the sniffles here. My allergies are something intense whenever the weather starts to change. See, this guy here, it's a little bit near right now, is straight and he's fine. This guy is slightly bent in. I actually tried, I took the brakes off and I was trying to take the whole, uh, what would be drum there, if you will, off so I could put some washers behind it so that I can bring the front out. But unfortunately, it's so rusted in there and I could only get a wrench in there, could not get it off. So it is what it is, it's bent. 
not a big deal. I'm not going to go straight backwards anyways. I just got to be slamming around. You can see my rear door was just hanging on by the top bolts by a tiny piece and the bottom wasn't holding on anything. I said, you know what? I just nicked it with the reciprocating saw. I'm pretty solid right here anyways. That doesn't really matter. It's just extra stuff and I didn't want it to fall off and get stuck under me or red flag me or something like that or black flag me, I should say. Disqualify me. So that's her. We'll make a clip here once we're done. This is prep for run number four, which is five days from today. So here we go. And the last thing to mention, what I'm going to try to do, I have this, and it's almost a perfect, pretty snug fit. It's a little looser than I'd like. Get the camera up there. But I'm going to use uh, not those clamps, but an actual clamp. And I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to run this from the top hose to the bottom. See if I can get it super tight with the uh, clamps, fill it with water, and I'm just going to circulate. Not as much water, obviously, as if I had a radiator, but some water. And I think I'm going to bend out just the front a little, and I'm going to rig the busted up radiator there. If I can rig it well enough that it's a little bit stiffer up front. Uh, but we'll see about that. So that's my idea with this. Here we go. Prep for run number four underway. So just to show our uh, finished attempt to meld the inner and outer tie rod back together is again it broke right where the threads go in. I have a thinner pipe and then a thicker pipe. I welded them together right here's the break. I welded that outside or that inside thinner pipe right up to where the outer tie rod kind of should thread in it but it snapped there. And then this thicker pipe I put about halfway over right here's the break. Got a pretty good weld out here, I feel like. I mean, again, I'm no, no big time welder, and this is just a simple MIG welder. My dad has run straight off just your normal electric outlet, so that shows how powerful it is. But uh, got a small piece of metal here, kind of welded, holding these two pieces together so that they're kind of one stiff piece. And I got a small piece in here and welded all around it because there was a small space there from the pipe feel like it's not too bad I mean again it's it's not gonna be nearly as strong as a actual inner and outer tie rod of course but we're gonna put the tire on it the spare tire on it I'm gonna put the tire on the other side and we're gonna see if she'll function enough to drive off the trailer and at least get us into the pit so feel like we had a successful day here and just a brief look as we have the spare tire on and we have the last tire I have for this old girl on you can see the tires actually rubbing uh, the bottom of the strut, but it should just wear the rubber. It's not rubbing too much. I'm not really worried about that. I mean, the tire doesn't turn fully to the right here, as you can see, because I rubbed there. Uh, that one there was bent up after the first run. This guy here, this strut is pretty, pretty bad, so the spare tire, and there is our weld, is holding. It's kind of tough to see with the shade. Hey, you can't really see it. Let's see it a little there. But it is holding. Uh, we are going to attempt to hook the truck back up and pull along the side road here and see if we can drive her off so I can go get my other car and uh, PT's pretty much ready to go. Just going to hook up the pipe running from the, uh, well I guess just running from the uh, radiator lines there and uh, yeah, she's together, she's the holding. We'll see if she moves around at least enough to get us into the pit here short. All right, so one last look here at our PT Cruiser finished build, if you will, uh, as we're about to go on our fourth run here in two days. She is done. I have it just sitting on this stand because this uh, spare has a slight slow leak, so I just don't want it to sit on the rim and tire, so I just put that under there. This tire also has a slow leak. These are the last tires I have. I have a couple tires there I just put behind the car. They hold air, but not for maybe more than two or three hours to a, like a legitimate uh, pressure. This guy just has a real slight leak, so we're going to paint them green. It's the only thing left to do. You can see she is done. We uh, up front was able to beat the core a little bit more back straight. Got a bolt here, some nine wire on each side. Uh, the radiator, this is the one from the last derby. Uh, it is nine wire together. You can see it's busted up a little. We are bypassing it, as I showed earlier. So there's that. Pulled that tube just a little to the side. So when and if, but more likely when, it gets pressed in. I get somebody in my front end. I'm not able to keep it totally clean. It's kind of past the starter. So that pipe with the uh, 
foam spray there shouldn't do any damage to the start or anything like that. So this is her. Again, the engine still purrs like a kitten. Uh, my weld job, I think, is as good. See if I can get the camera in there to focus. As good as it could be. Again, I took two pipes, one smaller than the other, welded first to the inner and outer tie rod, the smaller one, then welded the bigger one with uh, some metal inside it to try to make it more of a flush. Uh, weld and then I welded a little piece there on top. I'm actually going to on the inner tie rod there I don't know that this will help at all, but it just kind of make me feel better I'm gonna take duct tape and I'm gonna put a layer down because that that line is so thin and it's it's not even really like Pure metal. I don't even know what it is the inner tie rod that whenever I just touched the welder a little bit there at the end I wanted to see if I could make a, a firm grip on the inside as well as I feel good about my outside one And it just like started mounting right through. I'm like, yeah, I can't weld there. So uh, Yeah, we're gonna put some uh, duct tape on just just to make us feel better Got the cage re-welded feel good about it. It was a better weld this time just did the four-point cage Again, we are really weak over here going to try to protect it, keep it toward the barrier, same with the front, keep it toward the barrier, make some runs, survive the first five or so minutes of just pure chaos in the tight pit with probably around 15 cars again, and then see if we can start making some runs and see how long we can last. It is a feature, I'm excited about that. They added it late and I was able to get into it, so I think that gives us a better shot at being there at the end possibly. Up front here. I'm gonna put the battery in. I didn't change anything there. It's a little weak down there, but with that plate there as my Band-Aid, it kind of is pretty solid. It's kind of like that whole thing is weak together, and I really just can't weld, or excuse me, I can't drill any more there uh, for different reasons. The lines are in there. There's a funny like thing running right under there, and I can't drill through it. It's bizarre. So yeah, this is her. Fourth run, what I expect and hope will be the last one. But we're ready to go. I'm gonna put our sign back up top. I'm gonna to move it more toward the front this time as I have the uh, roll cage there, the halo cage. Not gonna have that there this time. So here she is. Tough car, good motor. We're gonna see how long we can last at this feature.